So one thing that I get asked a lot about hobby machining is the cost of tooling to actually use the machines. You can buy a mini lathe for about seven to eight hundred dollars now, but they don't typically come with any tooling. And it's pretty easy to imagine that that tooling probably doesn't come cheap. I think the saying goes is, you'll probably end up spending what you paid for your lathe in tooling alone. So an $800 lathe purchase can easily double to about $1,500 to $1,600 once you factor in the tooling. And whilst you can easily spend that much and even more, I don't think it's a useful metric for actually calculating how much you'll need to spend, at least initially. As someone who started out with basically no lathe tools, that wasn't my experience. So what I want to do in this video is detail the basic cost of tooling just to show you that it isn't that expensive to get into the hobby. Of course this is primarily focused on my experience with the hobby lathe and it might not apply to everyone but it should give you a rough idea of what you need to get started. So in my opinion, once you've bought your lathe, you only need about 5 or 6 things to get started and it shouldn't cost you that much. Now most lathes will come with a chuck installed that should be adequate for holding most workpieces and they're usually pretty decently made, so you don't need to worry about that. However, a tailstock drill chuck is something that you need to buy, and I would buy it on day one. I've never noticed too much difference between the cheaper and more premium ones, so a $40 Jacobs chuck should do fine. Just make sure it's connected to a taper that suits your tailstock. My lathe, for example, is a Morse 2 taper, so it has a Morse 2 tang on it. And whilst everyone has their preferences, I prefer to use a keyed chuck over a keyless one. I get a much higher clamping pressure using a keyed chuck, and I think it's worth it to me, even if I am always losing the key to it, hence why I spray paint the key red, so it's easier to spot. However, a lot of people like to use keyless chucks, so it's really up to you. And whilst we're talking about drill chucks, I also recommend buying a set of center drills. A cheap set of five goes for about 10 bucks and they work decently. However, the more expensive ones do tend to work a little bit better. Their main job is to cut a 60 degree center taper for a live or dead center, but they are really commonly used to spot drill using the tip. You can buy dedicated spotting drills, but I never have. These work just fine for spotting, just as long as you only use the tip for spotting. It's also recommended that you buy a live center for the tail stock. They start at around $40 each, and that's what you'd expect to pay for what is essentially a hardened cone in a ball bearing. I've had this one since I bought the lathe on day one, and after more than two and a half years of work, there isn't any play or slop in the bearings that I can feel. It's certainly a tool to buy on the first day, and I can see myself using this one for many years to come. The final tool that you'll need, or I guess tools, is a set of cutting tools. If your lathe is like mine, you'll need a set of 8mm tall tools to correctly cut on centerline if you're using the stock 4-way tool post. Now I do recommend getting a pre-ground set of high-speed steel lathe tools, they tend to be pretty decently well made for the money, and they cut really well on smaller lathes. They retail for about $40 for a set. If you buy these, I do recommend getting a hone or a whetstone to resharpen the cutting edge when they dull. For the same amount of money, you can buy a set of carbide insert tooling, which is what I originally did. Now nowadays, I do like to use carbide because I have made quite a few changes to the lathe that better allows me to use carbide. However, they really held me back in the early days of machining. They're not as sharp as the high-speed steel, and as a result, I was taking pretty poor depth of cuts. I was getting really bad surface finishes, so I guess learn from my mistake, out of the gate, get some high speed steel, and you can get into carbide inserts at a later date. And technically, whilst this isn't a tool, these machines do need lubrication on the wags and slides. The go-to is whey oil, or if you can't find any, an ISO 68 hydraulic oil is really popular and works really well. You can usually get a litre of it for about 15 bucks, but I picked up a 5 litre container for about 35 bucks, and this is going to last me for years. Now this might be a bit controversial, but if you can't get any, I just use any machine oil that you can get your hands on. Any oil is going to be better than no oil. 
I've seen people use chainsaw bar oil, and for the first few months of getting this lathe, I actually used 3-in-1 oil and 4-stroke motor oil on the ways. It's certainly not recommended, but any oil is going to be preferable to using no oil at all, at least until you get your hands on some proper stuff. Now at this point, that should be enough equipment to really get you started. All up, it should cost you less than $150. If you really are starting from scratch, you might need to factor in a bit extra for some twist drills for example, and if they are available, I would really look at getting some shorter stub drills that better fit in the confines of the lathe. However, that was not an expense for me, so I didn't factor it in. Although I did buy an extra set of digital calipers to use on the lathe, nothing special, just a $15 set, and they worked really well. My point being is, it really shouldn't cost you that much to get started on a mini lathe, at least compared to what some people might say. And with these basic tools, you should be good to get going. Speaking from personal experience, this basic setup was good enough for me for over half a year of machining. And from here on in, you can really spread the cost of tooling over the next few years. You only need to pick up things when you really need them for a certain project. And that's the part that's really important and I want to convey here. I was able to spread the cost of tooling over the span of about two and a half years. Now the next big upgrade that everyone tends to get is a quick change tool post. I got mine because it got really tedious swapping the tools in and out using the four way tool post, which is a really slow process. Plus, I bought a set of 12mm tool tools, and the only way to use them would be using a quick change tool post. And really, once you use one, there really is no going back. Just the ability to swap in and out tools very quickly is a big time saver. The only real downside to them is they can be a little bit pricey. Everyone's favourite budget one is this steel one that has a wedge that moves up and down to lock the holder in place. And whilst I've never used one personally, more than enough people have given them their tick of approval. The starting price for them though is about 130 to 150 bucks. And apparently I must have thought that was too much because I bought one of these aluminium ones that you can pick up for about 50 bucks. Now aluminium can work as a quick change tool post material if you aren't machining ferrous metal. This one I used for more than a year, and it worked just fine, however once I started to machine steel, there was really a lack of rigidity, and I ended up doing a fair amount of damage to the aluminium tool holders. Now instead of buying a steel one, I went ahead and made my own using the lathe and the mill. The one I made and the aluminium one use a piston lock mechanism rather than a sliding dovetail, they work really well on my setup, and I really don't know how they would fare against an off-the-shelf model. Unless you really are only planning on machining very soft plastics and aluminium, I would avoid getting an aluminium one. And really from here on in, when you buy tooling is really going to depend on the projects that you need to make. And I'll quickly skim through some of the tooling that you might need to buy. So the first one that I got was a dial indicator, and I got that more than a year or so after I got the lathe. This one here is a dial test indicator, and even the inexpensive ones are pretty accurate to 1 100th of a millimetre, and they're really useful when dialing in work. Even with the scroll chuck, these can be pretty useful for dialing in work. And of course, if you get an independent four-jaw chuck, these are a must-have item to help you really dial in the part. And speaking of chucks, the three jaw that the lathe came with should be good enough for most work. My one was decently made, and it was good for about 60 microns of run out, and for most work that is fine. However, I really needed a four jaw scroll chuck, and a replacement chuck that's about 80mm in diameter, which fits this lathe, wasn't that expensive. At the time, I was able to pick up the independent four jaw chuck for about $50 on sale, and I picked up the four jaw scroll chuck for about 80. The four jaw scroll chuck is really well made for the price, and it gives me about 40 microns of run out. However, with the independent chuck, with the dial test indicator, I can get it down to about 10 microns or below of run out. Now, one thing that I'm not sure that I'd buy again is the tailstock die holder. I had to make parts that required a lot of cut threads, and to save time, I bought this die holder. From memory, it was really overpriced at about $80 to 
It works really well, but I think I could have made my own for a fraction of what I paid. The final thing that I'll mention is upgrading the lathe. You can spend several hundred dollars upgrading the lathe, and it's really up to you to decide what is and isn't worth doing. I made a lot of videos on the subject, doing a lot of upgrades to the lathe. There's quite a few upgrades that I'd recommend, but one thing that I'd really recommend would be fitting new spindle bearings. The total cost is about $40 for new tapered roller bearings, but the increase in rigidity and cut and surface finish that you can take is certainly worth it. So to finish up, I really hope the takeaway from this video is that hobby machining with a lathe isn't as expensive to get into as you might think. If you do it like me, I think a good budget range is about $150 in initial tooling on top of the lathe purchase. Everything else can come later when you really need it and you can really spread the cost of tooling over the course of a few years. In total, I've probably spent in the region of about $700 to $800 if you include all the tooling and upgrades that I've made over the past two and a half years. I probably have a few more tools and I've probably done more upgrades than other hobbyists. So I think a good range for tooling and upgrade lies between four and eight hundred dollars. Though of course it is just an estimate and it can vary depending on model of lathe and brand of tooling that you do get. And that's about it really. I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you liked it, and with that, thank you very much for watching.